Welcome to this video from Learn Electrics. We've had many requests for a simplified explanation about SPDs or surge protective devices and installing them into domestic consumer units. The sort of questions we are asked are what is an SPD? How does it work? And how are they installed? There are three types of SPD, types 1, 2 and 3 and they all have a slightly different way of working and are installed at different parts of an installation. Very often type 2 devices will be installed at the front end of the consumer unit to reduce any harmful surges or spikes on the electrical supply and we will show you how they can be installed in a domestic consumer unit. They are available as single module width and as two module width depending on the manufacturer. Shown on the left is a normal AC waveform as you would expect to see in many houses. The rightmost drawing shows a waveform that is affected by nearby lightning storms. There are spikes or surges appearing on the waveform and these spikes might be hundreds of volts in size and they could cause problems with delicate electrical equipment, especially nowadays when just about every home has many electronic devices. These surges although significant in size, only last for a few millionths of a second, but may still damage some computer equipment. Installing an SPD will reduce these spikes to a very safe level. They may not be completely eradicated, but their size or amplitude will be severely limited. In simple terms, shown here, an incoming noisy waveform passes the SPD. The SPD is triggered by the size of the spike and very effectively chops off the spike and roots it down to earth. Typically, this will happen to any voltage above 250 volts and happens almost instantly, in just tiny fractions of a second. How does it do this? The SPD is made out of a block of material called a metal oxide varistor. The varistor part means variable resistance. On this diagram, you can see that if the voltage across the SPD is below 250 volts, then the varistor will exhibit a very high resistance, millions and millions of ohms of resistance. No current will flow through it, but if the voltage exceeds 250 volts, the varistor will turn on instantly and become almost a short circuit to the voltages present. This effectively grounds the spike and microseconds later, the spike has gone and the voltage has returned to 230 volts. All is normal and the SPD turns off and reverts to a high resistance again. Life is once more as it should be and the SPD just sits there waiting for the next spike. The SPD is called an active device and it will suffer wear and tear. Frequent activations and especially long duration surges can have a greater impact on its life expectancy. An SPD has a health indicator on the front and this should be checked regularly every few months by the customer, perhaps at the same time that they test the RCDs. If the SPD is functioning correctly and it is not damaged, the health indicator will be green. If the surge module in the SPD needs replacing, the window will be red. We would normally expect several years of service out of an SPD, especially in towns and urban areas. Most SPDs will be a two-part assembly, a connection housing and a surge module that plugs into it. The connection housing is the fixed part, the part that is secured into the consumer unit with all the wires. And then into this is plugged the surge module. It is the surge module that wears out and because it is pluggable, replacement is easy and effortless. You must pay attention to the wiring connections of an SPD. Different manufacturers will use different pinouts for their own SPDs. Some devices will have the line and earth at the top with the neutral at the bottom. Other SPDs will have the line and neutral at the top and the protective earth at the bottom. This drawing shows the basic layout of an SPD in a consumer unit. If this is a new consumer unit that is being installed, then you will most likely install the SPD part immediately after the main switch. It is common to install the SPD 
in series with its own protective MCB. Type 1 and Type 2 SPDs are always installed in parallel with the supply, that is to say, across the incoming supply as shown here. If the SPD is to be retrofitted onto an existing consumer unit, there is no problem with installing the MCB and SPD at the far end of the box as shown. This will leave all the existing RCDs and MCBs in situ and unaffected. Or with a full board in a separate box outside the consumer unit, so long as we keep the installation as it should be, as shown here. Take note of the conductor sizes to be used for the SPD part. The protective MCB can be up to, but not greater than, 32 amps rating. If a 32 amp MCB is used, the conductors to the protective MCB and to the line and neutral of the SPD should be 4mm. If a 20 amp MCB is installed and that is not a problem, then the line and neutral conductors must be at least 2.5mm. The earth conductor to the SPD must be at least 6mm in all cases. Let's look at installing an SPD consumer unit. Some manufacturers will supply all the pre-cut, pre-bent and dog-legged copper bars and cables for the bus bars and the neutral connections inside the package ready for use. Do not forget safe isolation and we will assume that the installation at this point is fully isolated and dead. Start by installing the meter tails into the main switch and the main earth into the earth bar. At this point also install all the devices into their correct positions and install the bus bars between the RCDs and their MCBs. Our supplier has also kindly included a copper link to connect the 32 amp MCB for the SPD to the main switch. Now connect the 6mm earth from the bottom of the SPD into the earth bar. Then install two neutral cables into the main neutral bar. The first is from the neutral at the bottom of the main switch into the main neutral bar and the second neutral 4mm is from the neutral of the SPD and again into the main neutral bar. Now we want to put the neutrals into the input side of the RCDs. From the neutral out of the main switch to the neutral in of RCD1 and then loop from the neutral in of RCD1 to the neutral in of RCD2 and then connect the neutral out cables. From the neutral out of RCD1 to the neutral bar number one and another from the neutral out of RCD2 to neutral bar number two. Now we can connect the lines. The MCB for the SPD is already connected to the main switch so start with a four millimeter line from the top of the MCB into the line input of the SPD. Now connect the RCD line inputs. From the line at the bottom of the main switch connect to the line in of RCD1 and then loop from RCD1 to the line in of RCD2. And that is the SPD and RCD part of the installation completed. Recheck the tightness of all the screws and then move on to installing the circuit cables into the MCBs. A brief summary. A surge protected device will protect an installation from spikes on the supply waveform that are above 250 volts. Type 1 and Type 2 SPDs can be installed at the consumer unit. Correctly installed, they should not adversely affect the functioning of BSEN 61008 RCDs and 61009 RCBOs. It is recommended that a 32 amp or 20 amp MCB is installed to protect the SPD from excessive duration surges. The SPD is an active device and the surge module should be health checked at intervals and replaced when the health window shows red. Pay attention to the pinouts of the SPD. Different manufacturers have different arrangements. The SPD can be installed after the main switch for a new consumer unit or can be installed at the end of the consumer unit using spareways or even in an external box if this is a retrofit. Be methodical with your cabling and eliminate potential errors by following your own preferred system or copy the method shown here. And that is an SPD installation in its most basic form. 
We hope that you've enjoyed this video and that perhaps you've added a little more knowledge to your mental toolbox. Thank you for watching this video. It is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. Here are some tips on getting even more information and help out of learnelectrics.com. At your web browser, enter learnelectrics.com into the search bar. Select learnelectrics.com from the choices offered and the website, as shown, will open up for you. You now have a couple of choices. You can search for a help item or any video by entering a keyword into the search bar on the right. Click on return and all the help files and videos with that word in the title will be listed for you. They will be shown with a short description and each video listed will have a link shown that will take you directly to that exact YouTube video. Or you can browse through a list of all the available items and videos. To do this, click on the LE logo on the top left of the home page and all of our items and videos will be shown. There will be 10 items shown on each page and at the bottom of each page is a page selector. Page 2, page 3, 4 and so on that will bring up the next 10 items or videos in the list. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. Once again, thanks for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.